The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello, and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Today, Max Olmsted, our videographer, is in front of the camera. Why are you in front of the camera, Max? Well, Felix, today I'm in front of the camera because I want to learn about motors and motor drivers and switches, and I was wondering if you could teach me about that. Great, no problem. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Let's get started. Brilliant. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, Mr. Holmes, if you want to know how motors uh, work and how to control them, you got to first realize that there are a bunch of different types of motors. There's DC motors, AC motors, and there's various types of AC motors, uh, one phase, three phase, so on and so forth. But we're just going to deal with DC motors. I think this one has a permanent magnet. Some of them have permanent magnets, some of them have a, a field winding. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll draw the inside of a DC motor for you. Here's one possible way it could be. You have your field winding here which would then go to your armature, which would be something like this. Here would be your leads. You have, say, positive here and negative there. So here's your stator and your, uh, your rotor. And depending on what of these two leads is negative or positive, will determine the direction that the rotor turns, either clockwise or counterclockwise, so okay. and so forth. So if you reverse those two, it'll switch the direction. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take this motor apart and we can see what's inside of it. Generally, motors, they have like this little tab here, but let's see what's going on here. Wow, that's a strong magnet. That's cool. Trying to get the magnets out. There's this tension spring in here. There. Now the magnets are just stuck inside this housing. Let's see here. There's a big magnet. Two big magnets. Awesome. All right, so these magnets are stationary inside this housing here. And then our rotor has these contacts down at the bottom that meet with these brushes. So they come out to a terminal. The power goes in through one terminal, meets up with a contact on one side. It goes through this coil and it creates an um, electromagnet inside. The brush meets on the other side through this other contact. So then the electromagnet is energized and then the poles are in a certain position. And since these magnets are inside, these permanent magnets are in there, they act in opposition to the magnetic poles of the electromagnet and it causes a rotation. And then as it rotates, there's a break in all the contacts. So as the motor turns on those brushes, it inverts the magnetic pull, thus causing it to continue spinning. So that's what's inside of a DC motor. Let's move on to the H-bridge. Okay. Now here are all the components that we're gonna use for the H-bridge that we're making. We have a 2N222 alpha transistor. We're gonna need two of them. And then we have two N-channel MOSFETs. They're the IRF9630 and then two N-channel MOSFETs, IRF630. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need some resistors and a few other components. But this is the layout of an H-bridge. So what does an H-bridge do? Uh, what an H-bridge does, it, uh, takes a cr it takes a voltage and it reverses the voltage sent to the different terminals of a motor. So okay. you can send it, turn it in one direction, stop it, turn it in the other direction. Okay. So Felix, we've got this working H-bridge here, and I want to transfer it to my perf board. What's the first thing I got to do? Well, let's collect our components. We need two P-channel MOSFETs okay. and two N-channel MOSFETs. Let's mm -hmm. see what we have here. <clears throat> Here's our what do we got in here? Box of goodies. Here are the P-channel MOSFETs. Mm -hmm. And we need N-channel MOSFETs. Go ahead and get two of those. N-channel, I can do that. And we need Beautiful. two of these NPN transistors. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Is that all she wrote as far as this box goes? Yeah, that's what we need now, out of here. Oh, actually, get to those two resistors, and you need these two resistors. Beautiful. Those are the 2.2 kilo ohms, and okay. these are the 10 kilo ohms. 2.2? <clears throat> They've got different stripes, that's how you can tell. Let's see what would be a good layout for our, our components on here. So our perf board, this is our solder side. Yep. This is the side except the solder, and this mm -hmm. is where we put our through-hole component. 
All right. We're gonna have two inputs. We got our motor and we have our power and ground. You know, a lot of times when I lay a components out on the board. Mm -hmm. I like to try and mimic the schematic as much as possible just to help me uh, with troubleshooting and keeping track of which components are where. Okay. But you'll see that um, not everything can just be laid out like it is in the schematic and on a perf board. It's also nice to try and get things as compact as possible. Mm -hmm. And we could really compact this quite a bit. So I took what Felix breadboarded and I referenced this schematic here and this is my attempt to cobble together an H bridge and we're going to see if it works. All right, power it up, see how hard it chooches. Let's do it. Let's plug her in. Moment of truth. Flip the switch. Okay, we have our, we have our uh, it's logic, going one direction. logic circuit hooked up to it. Looks like uh, it's switching directions. Could it be? Is it a success? <laughs> Bravo, Mr. Wow. Olmstead. I had no confidence that that was going to work. So, that's You've cool. done it. However, you haven't added the, uh, the logic. But yeah, I haven't added the logic yet. But we have uh, an interface to uh, ah, send it signals. Ah, got it on first try? Yeah. Well, it's exciting that the H-Ridge worked. Yeah, that was really great, Mr. Olmstead. Um, if you want to add some logic to it, you should just put on this NOR gate, and uh, you can have a couple of buttons on there, so you could put that on there and uh, control it. That would, you, would be like cool. That? Yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. So since the H-Bridge was a success, I wanted to try to add Felix's logic circuit onto my board, which I've done, and now we're gonna see if that works. It's not Felix's logic circuit, it's an RS latch. It's an RS latch. Felix didn't come up with it, he doesn't take any credit for it. It's right? a common circuit. Yeah, it's a common circuit that's not Felix's at all. Shall I plug it in? If that's what you're gonna do. All right. Didn't blow up yet. It's going pretty hard. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Something's wrong. Push a button. It seems I've ruined it. How do we troubleshoot this? Um, you got a short somewhere. Do I? <laughs> yeah. So it could be it. anywhere. In here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you did a lot of great work here. Your first time soldering something this complex. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, this is, a, this is a big task for a first timer. Yeah. And um, it was working great till we put that logic on there, of course, but. Uh, mm -hmm. So something's wrong in there. Like yeah. A, some kind of anyway, short. this actually is really a lot of lot more work than what's necessary in order to run or drive a motor. All of that work that you did is inside each one of these little packages here. I see. Right? You could get So I could have just used one of these. Yeah, I, you get yeah. a single integrated circuit that don't has have to all do the, that at all. all. All you would need to do is is uh, attach the external circuitry. So why would you ever choose to do it in the way that I did it? Okay, a reason why someone might want to do that is they're making a custom uh, motor driver. For example, say um, we only have a L293NE, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to drive something that's going to pull more than one amp. Yeah. So we would use those, and we don't have any other integrated circuit on hand. Okay. But we have a pile of MOSFETs. That would be one example why we gotcha. do that. Probably the only So in reason. a bind, <laughs> yeah, in a yeah. bind, <laughs> well, you'll do it the way that I did it. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, there could be a bunch of different reasons. One, another reason why we did it is for, uh, to learn how an H bridge works. Yeah, that's true. I did um, learn a lot. However, I so. would like to present to you and the audience our, a, a variety of packages that we could get from Newark. Okay, And we've got some it. here. The uh, L298N, it's a full H bridge. It goes from 4.9 volts to seven volts. In how many seconds? That, well, actually that's the supply voltage which controls the logic. Okay. But then it can actually drive up to 46 volts at four amps. And then we have this nice little- So in, in what situation would you use this? Is it just- Oh, it, um, an example of where you'd want to use that is if you're going to have something that could pull up to four amps. You could go up to 46 volts with it. This is a pretty hardy motor driver right there. Then there is the L293NE. It's uh, a half H bridge. It has 4.5 to 36 volts. It could drive one amp. This is a through hole component. Then there's the LV8731. It's a stepper motor driver. Then the MPC17C724EP. Yeah, right this, is, this is a really small motor driver. Um, we're looking at using that in the uh, hot glue gun. Uh, is it possible to solder to that even? How do you even? Well, start with that. Normally, when those are assembled, they're they're done and they're or put. Up. Normally, it's like a pick and place machine kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but we could actually we've actually 
managed to You've do You've done it before? Yeah. Because that's smaller than the diameter of your solder Well, actually, I have, a, I have a few different tips for my soldering iron. Okay. Some really tiny ones. But, you know, just trial and error. And then we have the L6219. It's a, it, another h bridge driver. It actually has a, it's a lar larger through-hole package. So it basically just depends on the size and power intake of your motor? Yeah. And as what to what the project component is. you're going to use? So along with uh, motor drivers and packages, there are also pre-made boards that have all the support circuitry already built into them. Even easier. Yeah, you just like yeah. plug and uh, attach a motor and some control mm -hmm. buttons and uh, or a microcontroller. And so if I just want to drive a motor and I want it to do whatever I want and I have very little time, I'm gonna use one of these. If you want a motor, you want it to go back and forth, Mm -hmm. You change directions, and you don't want to go through the effort the and hassle of building an H bridge, mm -hmm. or using or even a the relay. hassle of using an integrated circuit, or using an integrated circuit and adding all the support circuit. You yeah. can just buy a board mm -hmm. that has everything on it, and you just attach stuff to it. So this is another option. We got this BD six five four nine six. MUV single brushed DC motor driver. You can only drive one motor with this. And uh, is that what single brushed means? Yeah, single brushed DC okay. motor. Single one. one so if, so if I can motor. drive multiple motors, what would it be called? Dual bi-directional motor driver. This one you can drive two motors with it. Wow. This one you can only drive one motor. It's pretty hefty. Ho -ho, this one, as this you would is, say. Yep. This is actually these are these use the same integrated circuit and have almost the identical components, just okay. a different board layout. Okay, so now that we've briefly covered a few ways to drive motors, let's get down to some applications. So the whole reason why I wanted to drive motors was to create this project. Picture like you're in a video game like Mafia 3 or GTA and you're in a car and they're like telling you to, about a mission, right? So there's this guy and he's like, okay, so we gotta go knock over this uh, museum and grab the jewels and stuff. And then you bonk into a post or something and then he's like, what are you doing? Why are you driving the car this way? And then there's a loop that says, so as I was saying, and then he goes back to his story. So I want to make a physical representation of that. So it's a, it's a car going back and forth and the switches represent you crashing into something. And okay. I was like, what are you doing? And then it goes back to what he's saying. You've put together some components for me that uh, I can accomplish this with. So what have we got here? All right, here's our motor driver like we, we were looking at earlier. Mm -hmm. This is a TNC 3.1 and this is an audio shield that will connect to. So we can put some audio onto a, SD, a micro SD card mm -hmm. and uh, put, this in, put that into the uh, audio shield and then use the um, TNC to tell the motor driver what to do. Uh, we'll, we'll connect these limit switches up to the TNC and when the TNC uh, senses that a limit switch is hit, it'll reverse the direction of the motor and it'll play some audio. We need to get a speaker and then we'll, we can do it. Yes, Mr. Ohm said, we've got this working exactly how you want it, minus the audio. So we got uh, the analog, so that gives us um, speed control. Speed control, right. And we're, hey, actually, we can put we're the also, brick on there. We're also going here, back and turn forth. It, make it zero. Make it slow. Let's make it zero. Make, and we can totally automate it. Okay, here's our little, little stop block. Let's Cranking see. up the potentiometer. Uh, At a top bam. speed right, here. There we go. Top speed, all right. Completely automated. We're going okay. back and forth, and we can control the speed. Yeah. It's awesome. Now let's look at this code. I want to make sure you understand what's going on here. Oh, of course, we have to have a comment. The Squanch motor driver. Makes complete sense. Actually, this is Squanch motor driver um, version 0 0.001 point uh, underscore <laughs> 6. 
<laughs> Great. I love it. <laughs> Go uh, Motor Driver 3000. Oh, okay. Motor Driver. Squanch Motor Driver 3000 right. version 0. 0.00. Now you, now you have to have uh, credits six. here by max, ah. maximum. By max. minimum. <laughs> Max. Maximum Olmstead. Maximum um, Maximum Olmstead. And Golden max. Eye. Golden. Golden Eye. Eye. Beautiful. So right here at the top we have um, declared our variables. These are global variables. We're not even using these anymore, so we can just get rid of them. So get we're, rid of this stuff we're basically we're naming our pins. Yep. We, we that would be a great uh, comment. So yeah, we would put here um, pin numbers, right? So this is our pins, and this is motor flag, it'd be used in the main loop. So mm -hmm. when we go to our setup, again, we have our pin modes. We set all of our motor driver pins there, and then we set our limit switches, and we configure, what is this? You know what, that's why we gotta have comments. Okay, this is our um, potentiometer. These are limit switches. Let's switch one and two. Uh, switch left. So pull up just means it's always gonna be one. Yeah. There can be only one all the time. And the great thing about internal pull-ups is it saves us external components. We don't have to wire that. So if I put pull down, it'd always be zero. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if this has internal pull downs. It might, it might oh. not. I'm not sure. Um, some, some do, some don't. Okay, good mm. to know. Generally, they have internal pull-ups. I just go with that and it works. Okay, in our loop, we say, mm -hmm. if digital read limit switch zero, which is this one over here, limit switch zero equals zero, equals zero right? Remember we had the pull-ups, you, yep. you just mentioned that. Um, we do motor flag one. Uh, and then it goes as if limit switch um, one, which it's not gonna do until it gets back over here. So it skips over that, it goes into here. Byte speed equals map analog read uh, motor speed, which is our analog zero to two, 1,023, zero to 255. Then we call our, our motor drive function right here. Mm -hmm. And we send it one because we always want it to go. And we send it the motor flag, which is gonna be one or a zero. Yep. With, and then that's gonna be the direction. And then speed which cool. we just got here from reading the analog. So yep. when we go into our motor drive, we say int enable, which we're gonna get a one, so it enables. Mm -hmm. And int direction is our motor flag, it's either gonna be one or a zero. Um, you know a better name for this would be motor direction. Control C, control R, motor flag, control. This is why I like this development environment. Yeah, that's cool. Motor direction. Change it on the fly. And then find all. Leaving one. And then replace all. See that? Pretty mm -hmm. cool. You can't do that with the Arduino development environment. Well, if you can't, certainly I don't know can't. Um, and if you can, it's not that easy. Well, anyway, we had direction here. Mm -hmm. We use direction down here. So if enable is one, we say analog right motor speed enable. That is going to be our PWM signal going to the enable pin on our motor driver, and that tells it how fast to go. Yep. And then else, yeah, analog writes motor enable zero, so it doesn't. It's completely off. And then if direction equals one, it's going to set the logic so that it turns this way. And if it's not a one, then it's going to go the other direction. Well, Felix, it's been quite a journey. I've learned about H-bridges and ladder logic and integrated circuits and motor driving boards. And we even did a little Arduino code. I'm really excited. Hey, I had a great time working on this project with you, and there is still a lot more that I wanted to go through and I'm curious about myself, but you know, we did what we could do and it was fun. Do you have any questions or comments about motor drivers? Let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. And we'll see you online. We certainly will. I think we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. The Adventures of Super Noob. War Horse. Hi, Mr. Music. Look at me. Come over here and squanch with me. This is going to squanch right here, and this is going to squanch right about here. Mm -hmm. Would you want to squanch it like this, or would you want to squanch it like that? I'd want to squanch it like that. I learned about H bridges. H bridges. My H I put my <laughs> H bridges on. Yeah, if you. Man. <laughs> Maybe you all in the audience can tell us your motor driving experiences and projects you've worked on. How many motors have you driven? Tell us about it. What types of motors? How did you drive them? Don't turn it on. Tear it apart. Do you have any questions or comments about motor drivers? How would you drive a motor? <laughs> How Squash. would you drive a motor? How much is that motor in the window? Felix, why is this logic gate board game prototype laying out here. I was digging through our bins and I thought, you know, we put all that work in there, we could do something with this. Well, Felix, what do you suggest we make? Uh, maybe you could make something with uh, toggle switches. So I was thinking I could make a decimal, hex, binary, electronic quiz game. So I'm doing a similar project to uh, Mr. Heckendorn, and I'm making an electronic sorban, which is a Japanese word for abacus. So the real tough one is decimal mode. Show me what you've got.